Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensava's Place. If you're a music fan, one of the things that exist in our business are great musical families. The Jacksons, the Bee Gees, Beyonce and Solange, In Excess, Hanson, it goes Oasis, it goes on and on and on. Um, and you're going to meet one that you didn't know of. You're going to meet the Dobsons. Uh, her, the sister, Alexandria, is one of the best vocal producers ever. Their father, Pops, you'll meet on this thing. And you may know of their famous brother, Rance, who um, they have been nurturers. They have been educators. They're on some of the biggest records going, Beyonce, Bruno Mars, you, Brianna, Jay-Z, you name it. Um, and their school, 1500 or nothing, is one of the leading lights in our business. So you're going to enjoy our conversation. Tune in and meet the Dobsons. Alex Dobson, how are you, babe? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. So, so, so I want a, a couple quick things before we get to the meat of it. Um, when I met this family years ago, and they're, they are immensely and closely tied into 1500 Sound Academy, uh, 1500 and nothing, the band, amongst other things. The most important thing, which is a characteristic that we try to get you guys to understand, is they were super cool people. They were welcoming and loving and sweet and and just amazing. Um, her brother Rance is a an amazing producer that you know of, uh, the head of 1500 and nothing an educator, a musical director, a producer, a bunch of stuff. Uh, her dad, Pops, is a vocal coach and an amazing producer and somebody who keeps the family tight and makes everything happen. And Alex, oh, my man, there he is. That's Pops. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> That's the man. That's the man. <laughs> uh, that's where it all stemmed from. And actually, when I first met them, and I'll stop talking, Pops was working with Rance, and they were playing the Folgers coffee theme and just kind of working out what that meant. And I was sat there, I had my head cocked like the RCA dog and said, are they really doing this? As, so when I talk about music, this ain't just making beats. This This is music at the highest level. So, Alex, tell me how you fit in this and what you do in it. Well, um, I actually play a really supportive role. Um, I'm the middle child, so, you know. Mm -hmm. And I basically, as far as the, the 1500 or nothing, I'm one of the original members. When the band first got formulated, it was only a band at first. And then yep. we added band singers and added writers and all that kind of stuff so to be a part of that from the very beginning was a beautiful story and um so here at the academy i'm actually one of the instructors i teach songwriting and we just started a new program about two months ago for the vocal program um that program is six months long super excited about that they kind of saw that me and pops are bringing a lot of attraction to that because the labels um, are missing the artist development element um, and so they always call us for help. And so it's, it was starting to grow. Um, the program is amazing. It starts off with intro to, uh, to vocal techniques. Then it goes to advanced vocal techniques and then vocal performance, vocal recording, advanced vocal recording. And then it ends with music, uh, business of music, of singing, I'm sorry. So it teaches them how to harmonize. It teaches them how to sing with others choreography, all the vocal techniques. It's a really great program. And I'm really having a lot of fun with it um, because it's our first time doing it. So you kind of, with a class, with a program like that, you have to kind of mold it based on the students you have. And I've gotten lucky. I have a lot of very talented students in there, but it's really been great because it's one of those things where it's like a lot of inner work that we have to do to be able to bring people out. And it's super, um, I'm kind of like a therapist in a way. <laughs> and, uh, and also be able to push people to the next level and get them in their, um, you know, building their confidence and things like that. So it's a great program. You and know what you took me is she hired me as her <laughs> assistant to do parts of my work. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Listen, <laughs> the family that works together stays together. Okay. That's right. <laughs> well, That's what right. you, you touched on something interesting that I have found in my journey 
in talking to several different kinds of vocal producers around the business, which is people don't understand that you have to find out what's happening inside in order to get it to come outside properly and to grow. Is that correct? Absolutely correct, yes. I can put on one word, sing with conviction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Literally, sing with conviction. And, you know, one of the things that I, I'm just going to be honest, I guess I, I'm going to describe myself as an old school guy. Mm -hmm. I do not believe in auto tunes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and and, to, and I know the, this generation, they they in it. And I, and I respect that. But I want I want to hear the deliverance naturally. Mm -hmm. and, and you can relate. You know, you can relate. When we saw artists of the past, we like the record, but when we went and saw them to perform it live, they did it better than the record. You know what I mean? And then it, that's what's it, missing in today's era. There's really no conviction, in my opinion, of the artists today. You know what? If if you went to see them live and they weren't as good, you got penalized. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like 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 there was a bar, and 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 to speak to that, because Alex Pop, you as well, Rance clearly but alex has been on all these different records and artists quietly and nobody knows she's there we got to talk about that in a second but one of the things that you will appreciate is i new edition recently rehearsed at the facility where my office is and i and i got them in there and their Sven golly their pops brooke payne mm -hmm. is a dear dear friend and we introduced him to a young male group out of fort worth and the guys flipped out because the guys are so good so so Brooke rehearsed them and which is very unusual, right? Brooke doesn't let his he doesn't let his stuff get interrupted, but that's how good the group is. And within two minutes, he, he gathered them, stopped them, and said, Look, if you're gonna sell some shit, sell some shit. <laughs> like, which is which is another way of saying conviction. Absolutely. Um, and I remember he slapped one of their hands off the mic and said, Look, you're not a rapper. This is not a diss about rapping. Just you're not a rapper. So get up and sing. Don't get up and, you know, pose and, and preen. So, but, but I do think that in today's world, and Alex, I'm curious about your take. What you all have to deal with is that old school stuff of conviction and then tools that can help somebody get there. Yeah. Right. But, but you don't want the, you don't want the tool to replace the singing. Am, am I right? Absolutely yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So how do you, how do you handle that? Well, I kind of just really uh, assess each singer to kind of see where they are mentally, to see where they are vocally. Mm -hmm. um, the class is designed for a group setting, actually. So um, we actually been teaching really difficult stuff, uh, songs like um, Manhattan Transfer, because this mm -hmm. class, they have an ear for that kind of stuff. So once they're learning the dynamics, because, you know, in the professional singing world, you have to be able to sing dynamics. Like a lot of them come from church. So they're like more they're They might be yelling more, not be breathing properly, or they come from theater where they're projecting and they're singing too loud. So a lot of unlearning what they know already and then really having them tap into the dynamics and learning how to emote to kind of like centralize what they're actually doing what's actually going on, because a lot of them are in their head mm -hmm. and singing in the group setting, I think. We're getting the best results because they're still having to learn the dynamics as a group. And then when they break apart and they sing individually, they're able to add that into their own uh, performances. Mm -hmm. So I think it's working. It's getting pretty quick results. One of the things, too, if I may add, um, is that what we're trying to also teach these singers of today is that content is finally important for you to know what you're mm -hmm. singing. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a sad song, and you heard about it, you sang sentences in that song that reflect how you feel about a particular situation or a particular individual, then you got to learn how to express what, express that with the various frequencies that your voice will allow you to give mm -hmm. that point across. See, that's the magical part of, of it, of this industry that our singing is concerned, how you reach an individual soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you're mm -hmm. saying something that people get people can relate to they may have experienced it in the past or know someone that is going through it then if your deliverances coincide with the way that sentence is, is written bam i think you got a hit record tell me if you think this is a true statement i i, I would tell people it, 
it's not the singing business. It's the believing business. You, 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 right? Like it's, it's not always the best singer that wins. It's the one that you, that you believe that you, that touches you, that you, that you buy into. Madonna was never going to replace, you know, an opera singer, but when she sang holiday or she did whatever the case may be, you were like, you're rolling with it. Or, or, you know, we could go down the line of people who, who knew how to touch you as opposed to, we can go to any church and find great singers every Sunday. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But that's not the same as doing what we're doing. When you're on a professional, professional, when you're doing a session, Alex, that's for another artist, do you play different roles? Is, a, is it always just background or is it vocal producing or is it different things for different, different artists? Well, each artist requires something different. Um, I really just kind of read the room and I just play, you know, play it quiet. Um, but I am a songwriter. Um, I'm also a vocal coach. I, it was funny because when Rance and James, they really didn't have the patience to do that. Mm -hmm. But they put their records that they were working on to be perfect and they trusted me to do it. So that's kind of how I fell into that. And we used to have artists signed to us. So I kind of just turn on whatever, put on whatever hat I need to put on. Whether just be bringing the, the energy to the room, whether it be writing or also vocal producing or coaching them in the process. And see, I also think that is, and you guys tell me if you agree, I think the more you can get your hands in, your feet in, your head in, your heart in, the more not only do you learn about various things, the more you def start to define your style of what you do like not not everybody you probably don't teach this necessarily the same way you and pops probably have some nuances different in the way you approach it and mm -hmm. and ultimately one thing may work one way and another but you you get it from getting in it and mm -hmm. and, and trying to do a lot you know and, and what is good for the audience to understand is this is an area that's going to be that becomes more and more important as it goes on, it's it's the ability to teach somebody or have somebody unlock their potential to to make a song that takes a song from here to here, that mm -hmm. takes your income from here to here. That is a gig that will continue on that you can do professionally or do as a teacher or do whatever. That is often a service that people don't think they have a shot at working with the professional. And now you can do that with technology. If you want to get to Alex and learn, and she's in LA or in Inglewood, and you're in Auckland, Australia, you can get some learning from her. And, you know, we can, so, so please know that. And as our business expands, you, you got to be on the edge of it, learning and being prepared for your opportunity. Cause somebody you're in a global business. You're not in a, regional neighborhood business. Is that fair? Absolutely. Very much so. I actually did some teaching in Japan. Um that was really great. Um there was vocal boot camps going on. There were flaming down there and pops down there. And the food was good. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, you're absolutely right about it being a universal thing because I've had to teach people who didn't speak any English how to sing English. And you know, like when you come from certain countries, they might accent certain words and it's like singing is universal, but you have to kind of unlearn. It's a lot of unlearning. And breaking things mm -hmm. down and reteaching. So I think that's really the main thing that I've learned. Um, also, being a background singer, I've sang for Beyonce. I did the uh, the Dubai show, so I've had uh, you know the experience to be able to be one of the biggest artists in the world. So I've learned from that. Also from singing in church. Also from singing in the studio. So I've done a lot of work quietly, and um, all of it's kind of molded me into who I am. And so I'm able to meet the students where they are and wherever case they may be. And it's, I really find it fun to like be able to watch them grow and to be able to meet them when they're at and kind of pull them where they need to be. You know, if I may say also just to add to that, because yeah, she she left me out in the training. That's okay. I don't, I don't care about that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the deal. From an artist artist's perspective, be a great singer is one thing. To great be a great performer is another. Whole other world. And you have to combine both to be successful. When I look back at my career and how long I've been doing this stuff, I have to think about Michael Jackson because I watched this kid grow in Chicago. I watched him actually grow. And the one thing him and I had in common, which I don't see a lot of artists today do, 
is have that hungriness to be better today than you were yesterday, every day. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is when you get a, for an example, if you have a hit record and people are grooving on your hit record, you know what you should be doing as an artist? You should mm -hmm. stand in front of a mirror and see what you look like as you're performing that song to enhance your performance and get the crowd even more involved in it now that they're saying it. Many artists don't do that today. I'll have to take my ass off to one. Bruno Mars. He does it. Well, He's I was the man that I see doing. I, and 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 y'all have some connective tissue to Bruno Mars too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bruno Mars has helped with rent a couple times. So we we, yeah. we know what's that, right? Well the <laughs> other thing I the other thing I was gonna say to you pops, uh well two things. One is See, as a dad, and your kids drop things like, oh, yeah, I'm working with Bruno Mars. I work with Beyonce. I work, you know, just everyday regular people that you can get to all the time. You should be a very proud dad because I know yeah. that emanates from, you know, that's why I call y'all one of the first musical families that people don't know. You know, the, and, but they'll know now. They'll know now. But, but here's another quick Michael Jackson thing. As a, as a Laker freak, mm -hmm. and I was a Laker freak when I lived in Kentucky. So I'm not new to it. This is, you know, I'm old. My birthday was yesterday when we were taping this, but that's a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. So what a lot of people don't know is one of the things, one of the people most inspired by Michael who talked to him regularly was Kobe Bryant. Mm. And, and Michael would tell Kobe, you have to be not afraid to take on the heat because you want to be great. Right. And, you, and you're going to get heat for wanting to be great because nobody's going to understand your discipline. Right. And when you think about Michael rehearsing every Sunday, mm -hmm. getting, in the, getting in the mirror, mm -hmm. whether it was Jackie Wilson or James Brown, then you think about Kobe's obsessiveness with uh -huh. getting better and shooting mm -hmm. a thousand shots and making sure Gigi grew as a, as a, as a, as a lady ball player. It takes a commitment to be great. And yeah. And, and if you, it, I, I liken it to athletics. If, you know, all of us have been blessed with having achieved something, I mm -hmm. work my ass off and, and I continue to at this age. So, but it's, but it's cause I want to see something good come from my contributions. Like it, it's, it's me against me. So it's kind of like being a golfer, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> so for the audience standpoint, yeah, you can show off if you make there, and you may, but but I will tell you that the greatest of the great, not the middle, they ain't nothing wrong with the middle, but the greatest of the great are a couple things. Always curious, always hungry, always wanting to set the bar. That is consistent among the greatest of the greats. And, um, and, and you're meeting a family that has had literally years and years of participating in things that rock the house. You, you've danced to this family stuff and you didn't even know you were dancing to it. Um, when I had the pleasure of meet them, I used to just go out of the studio and sit in the corner and not do anything just to watch the musicality going on. And, the, and it was a combination of old school and new school, but it'd be Bruno Mars. And it would be Adele. Mm -hmm. And it would be a band they put together in in a community where they decided to open up their home and have people who couldn't make it could live in their house and be developed and make it like this. This commitment goes back and it is deep and it's across genres, across people, it's across sexes. I'm telling you, man, it's the real deal so just know that i i've been honored to be invited into it and know y'all and um and and really the biggest question of the day now is can kira sing kira's on our team by the way <laughs> yes she can i've been vocal coaching her different time she's uh i just watched her blossom and i'm so proud of her and i'm so proud that our relationship you guys know she's not part of your team. That just makes us so happy where yes, yes. we're able to be an extension and a blessing to others by just their, their own characters. Once they know how to, we teach them to be a service at first. You know what I mean? That's how you get in the door. If you remember that, and I always teach my students that you have to be a service first because everybody thinks they're going to get their big break. And there's a, 
it's interesting how the type of people that we attract at the school, a lot of people think they're going to come here and get discovered right away. And it's like, because they see celebrities and they see us and they see different people here. And then you have the other ones that understand they have to work hard. But that element, a lot of people in this this era, they don't understand how hard they need to work. You know what I mean? They don't know. But she mm -hmm. mm -hmm. definitely understands. And we definitely teach that here. So, um, yeah, it's just a blessing. We hire our own uh, students that are alumni. They work in volume. They work at the academy. So it's just like, and it's been beautiful to see some of our students are tour managing and performing and opening up for artists. It's just like a beautiful thing that it's, it's blossoming and it's going crazy right now. So I'm just proud of all the students and alumni too. You know, one of the things, uh, if I may say, you know, sure. looking at it from a dad's perspective and seeing how these guys of mine just have taken a career that I started and just blossomed. I, it, I am really extremely proud. But you know what makes me more prouder than even that? Hmm. The fact that I'm seeing that because of what they're doing, it's like an invisible magnet that is attracting good people to the organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I see that every day here. And it just, it just thrills my heart, man. Because when these people come in here and see what they're saying, you know, they see us, the first thing they do, they choke up because, you know, oh, gosh. But when they feel the love that we provide here throughout the training, they get so relaxed. And which allows us the ability to teach them. Mm -hmm. so that's, the one, that's one barrier you have to break in order to get to them. I, I, I can attest to the fact that <laughs> I remember having 1500 nothing on Pensado's place a couple times early. Mm -hmm. and, and I had to learn about it, right? And as mm -hmm. I learned about it, I was like, oh, they, these, they can't be that ambitious. What are you talking about? They could create a band and housing people and growing. Now, this is way before the school thing, right? And then once I found out about it, and then I remember James Durant said, well, you know, we're doing the school thing, come down. So I came down before the building that you're currently in. Right. Mm -hmm. And the moment you walked into the studio, it was just different. It was like, no, this is a place of excellence. Don't worry about where you're at. Don't worry about what's coming out of here. It's fire. <clears throat> and you're going to adjust to this, to our brand standard, because this is how the best do it. And it's not about where you're at. And it's not about being in a studio in Hollywood. It's not about all this. It's about bring the fire. And what I like about what you said, Pops, because this is part of it, audience. It's a magnet that attracts what's good, and it repels folks who aren't good. Right, like when you turn a magnet around, it it, it don't it don't work, <laughs> and some folk gotta go. Right, That's so true. They usually just switch up. Yeah, they, they switch up. They get humble because it's like the space is so amazing here. It's like they have, they have to humble themselves. Yeah, and 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 also it is really important from from an audience standpoint to know that because you might not be right for this, it doesn't mean that you're not right for something else. But it's better that you find out. Uh oh, it looks like a tall guy. I have a feeling it's a brother. It's a brother. He's giving a right now. Is he? Is he? Is he trying to stick his head in? Oh, he's gonna stick his head in. Okay. Okay. But but I think that when you go down to the academy, you do feel one. You're gonna walk away with something that's gonna make you better. But you got to put in your time. You got to make your commitment. Um, secondly. Don't squander the opportunity. They right. don't come up. They so, don't come up. They don't come up. It's so we we you know we're in our fourteenth year in Solace Place, and we see the people come on. Oh, thanks. Thank no, look, it's because of y'all. Nobody wants to see this ugly face. Yeah. So no, no, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm I'm telling you, we're so blessed that people want to come here and have conversation that just what you all are doing we always feel the need which is why we ask kara to be part of the team and max and other people where do we take it to the next level mm -hmm. and and we got some next level stuff coming for y'all i can't announce it yet you know i'll, so come, down, I'll come down and share oh okay. yeah I'll, I'll come down and share for sure um how do you are you optimistic about the music business and where it's going because i i think music is now media i think it's bigger than music music and audio are in everything yeah. well, are you optimistic 
I'm very I optimistic. I'm very optimistic. And, and, and I have to, so you know the old saying, as the world turns, so is everything else, right? Uh, it seems like I've seen this picture before. And I think our world right now is at a point to where it was almost like this in the 60s with the wars and all the this disruption just going on. It brings people to thinking, okay, something's not right here, which allows music to penetrate their souls to help them find themselves and get right. I truly, I think that's where we are right now. It's in the infinite stages. Oh, but it's going to burst. But and that's why we're trying to align ourselves with people like yourself. Because I said, like I said, the creator is, put, is grasping together all his good people, okay, to work solely together on whatever profession they are as one and build this thing even bigger than what it has ever been. Well, that's an optimistic belief. Two, two things about that. One is my prayer is the generation we came out of when there was strife in the world, artists spoke. Mm -hmm. Artists wrote great songs about it. They faced it. They they translated it for in ways that other people don't understand. We need that. We need the artist's perspective to to write that song, to point out that problem, mm -hmm. to deal to deal with stuff. When you see what Beyonce did with country and said, "Y'all yeah. no, y'all gonna understand this, or you're not." But I'm bringing it. Exactly. And, and and when I see the genres, look, I'm I'm working on on working with potentially the first black K-pop group. Mm. Wow. Oh, it's crazy! I, I'm coming down to play it for you. Uh, it's is absolutely crazy. But so people are putting these mashups together and saying, "We we have no boundaries. We're we're the we're, we we push the boundaries." You know what I'm saying? And so again, for the audience that's watching, this is your opportunity to not only speak, but also you don't have to speak inside some some lines. Speak where you need to speak, but put it together. Don't, I I had Bad Bunny's people on, this is about a year ago, and I was like, do you know what a go-go beat is? They were like, no. And I was like, just go listen to one and y'all do something. Right. Just, I just want to see what it, what happens with it. You know what I'm saying? They were like, oh, yeah. okay, we'll do that. So, so that's one of the licenses that I think is amazing about what we're doing. And then the other part is, with technology and AI and gaming and tech and all that kind of stuff, we're going into new worlds. Okay. We're going into new worlds. And you've got to see that as opportunity, right. not, not as a challenge. Like mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, computers can't cry. Nope. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? But so yeah. you, you want to use the tool, not be used by the tool. Exactly. But, but use the tool. Don't, don't forget your heart. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So do you, you, you guys agree with that? Okay. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. 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 About what's going on. And, you know, with us being educators, we always have to be in the know and ahead of everything, like 10 steps ahead of everybody. So it's like really great. And then we already have like a bunch of partners that, you know, that we're in you know, contact with and oh, building yeah. things and being innovative with. And just a lot of great things happening. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. And, and and last part, I have to get your son's permission because see, as as I still run around and say I'm an advisor to fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do that till it till I can't. <laughs> so even if we just talk once a year. Yeah. Because I'm so proud of what you guys do and proud to have been part of it early and watch it grow and persevere. People have no idea. This guy ain't got for two minutes. So oh, I put him on. Put him on. He's asking for you. But, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only. Oh, what up, buddy? Happy birthday, man. What's up? Thanks, man. Thank you, brother. How you doing? I don't miss guys too much, but I miss you, man. What the fuck? I, I, I'm coming down. I got a lot to share. Audience, if you don't know who this is, this is Rance Dobson, who oh, lived yeah, yeah. Oh. As, as, as a visionary, as a producer, as a writer, as an educator, as a businessman, has literally taken his vision and manifested in ways 
you can't imagine you don't know how hard it is you don't know the work it takes you don't know and this brother handles it all that's my dude how are you man hey, bro. Hey. Well, she, you. She, with the ghost. She, she know everything i know uh listen listen i get to interview the family yeah. i tell people it's one of the first families of music you just better to look at too so <laughs> that's what i say about me too <laughs> i'm coming down to see you man i love you man oh. whatever y'all need from us we ready i love you too brother i'm back at you all right all right, all right. So, so for the audience, that's an example of how this works when you come down to 1500 Sound Academy. It is, yeah, you're going to learn and you're going to be challenged and it's going to be technical and it's going to be ambitious, but it comes from family and it comes from heart and it comes from people who take care of each other. And that's ultimately how you want to learn. That's ultimately how you want to learn. Um, I love y'all. That's the only way I can put it. You love me more. Thank yeah. you again for having us. You're my brother, man. <laughs> <laughs> my man. <laughs> um, I'm so honored you could make that when Kira and and Tyler and my team, you know, Pensado's Place is mostly run by women, and they absolutely kill it. They absolutely kill That's it. So lady. Oh, yeah. And I, I, and I, I won't change it for... Uh, they're t and, and they're also artists you know tyler tyler's dad is 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 you know he's one of the whispers wow. um uh, wow. and yeah scotty scotty scott is her dad that's crazy oh yeah 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 one of the one of the wow. one of the best voices in r b ever and a scat master yeah. uh, and it had a huge influence to, to this day on my career but but we we're like y'all we try to come from a place where the artistry is part of it but the brand standard never comes down Absolutely. And, and the dobsons and 1500 sound academy do that as good as anybody on the planet uh audience you've met stuff we can get information to you you should go to the website if you need to um you're amongst royalty and we're happy that they're friends and family well, your mom's family that's all Absolutely. no question no question look I, I, i'll close with this i had come down i was some strange guy who happened to Silas place y'all were very and within a half hour your family invited me to thanksgiving right <laughs> literally within a half hour we like and to I, was mad, I, I was mad i didn't go because i know the food was going to be ridiculous so awesome <laughs> still time still time Love you both. Thank you much. Thank you, Thank you man. so much. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, the Dobsons, and we'll see you next week. Take care. Take care.